Charlotte Bryson Taylor was an American writer. Born in 1880 in Washington, D.C., the daughter of surgeon and medical director of the U.S. Navy, Rear Admiral John Eatman Taylor, and Isabella Barr Bryson. In 1912, she married Anderson Oakes Randall. He died in 1917. She published her first story in Overland Monthly in 1898 and wrote stories for Everybody's Magazine, The All Story Magazine, and Muncie's Magazine. She published two novels, her 1904, In the Dwellings of the Wilderness, which we shall be reviewing today, and her 1906, Nikanor, Teller of Tales. She died in 1936. The novel has a group of Americans, Dean Meriton Holloway, on an archaeological dig in the desert, but the men doing the digging are afraid of disturbing the buried city due to the traditional fear of ghosts and whatnot. The city has been abandoned in the wilderness and buried under the sand for 2,000 years. The serious no-nonsense merit starts gushing on about the snow degradation of the city after its abandonment, surprising his friends with this atypical behaviour. Meanwhile, Holloway is gone, trying to photograph the place, despite his servant's best effort to melt his film via good old-fashioned incompetence. The following morning, the men continue digging until they find an unruinated wall with writing on it. It seems to be a tomb based on the typical inscription. When they do get inside, they see that Holloway was right when he said he seemed to see a light shining inside, 50 feet below ground. When they do get inside, they come across another sealed door with another inscription and with a lamp burning beside it, uninterruptedly for 2,000 years. Inside, they find a shrunken corpse adorned with many jewels, lying unbanded just within the threshold. The paintings on the wall identify the corpse as a royal lady who was beastly to men of common rank whom she used for her own pleasure, was reprimanded by the king, and then sentenced to be walled in alive. Now Ibrahim, the man in charge of the Arab workmen, is very earnest that everyone must get away at once, since the devil soul of the dead woman would surely have been let loose by the opening of the chamber. Then a cave-in happens and imprisons Dean in the chamber with the corpse, with everyone scrambling to dig him out. As he waits, he gets dizzy, and he senses perfume, which seems to grow ever stronger. Soon he is madly tearing away at the stones, barring his way because of what he sees watching him from where the corpse was found, and when he is carried out, he raves of dead things and flowers in the sun. Dean is recovering in his tent, and Holloway casually asks which crate the princess's corpse was packed into for shipping, but despite Merritt swearing he hadn't packed the body yet, it is gone. The workmen are questioned, and Merritt suspects the body was stolen, but Dean has evil dreams of being prisoned with the dead woman again, and a thing begins to beckon to men from beyond the mounds, and they disappear without a trace, the workmen being very agitated and wish to leave the dig at once. Hafiz the cook then says he saw it and wished to die, before he disappears the same day, when called forth by the breath of the gardens of paradise and a woman's voice. Merritt laughs at them and thinks the men have been drinking, but the next day the man who saw Hafiz run into the desert does so himself, and that is only the beginning. 